Welcome back to another episode of Microwave Playground. Today, I'm going to be making Terp Butanol. Despite its simple structure, it is incredibly hard to get a hold of. And by that, I mean I can't get it off of Amazon, Walmart, or Lowe's. Now, the reason why I'm making Terp Butanol is that it is an incredibly versatile reagent. It can react with alkali metals like sodium and potassium to form very strong bulky bases known as terp butoxides. It can also react with hydrogen halides to form terp butyl halides. With sulfuric acid, it can dehydrate into isobutylene. And with aromatic compounds, it can add on to them as terp butyl substituents. But that's enough about terp butanol. Let's get started. The materials you need are terp butyl acetate, sulfuric acid, sodium carbonate, and hydrous magnesium sulfate and molecular sieves. The first thing I'm going to do is dump in a whole liter of terp butyl acetate. This is roughly 7.4 moles of terp butyl acetate. Then I'm going to add 760 milliliters of water. This is a huge excess of water in relation to the terp butyl acetate, followed by 240 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Tert butyl acetate can only be hydrolyzed by strong acids. This is because the ester is a very bulky molecule and the hydrogen ion is very small and nimble, being just a bare proton. It easily attacks the doubly bonded oxygen sticking out of the ester, which causes it to become a hydroxyl group. At the same time, the bridging oxygen shifts its electrons away from the tert butyl group to become the new carbonyl oxygen. This is what produces acetic acid. The tert butyl cation, while stable, is still an extremely strong acid. It quickly takes on a water molecule and kicks off one of its hydrogen atoms. This regenerates the acidic proton which allows the reaction to continue. The aforementioned terbutyl cation is what also makes the reaction irreversible as opposed to using a primary or secondary alcohol. However, if a base is used like sodium hydroxide, the reaction will proceed significantly slower. This is because the hydroxide ion is very large and the terbutyl group is very bulky. The hydroxide has to squeeze itself through the methyl and terp butoxy groups to bond to the carbonyl carbon. If I perform this reaction with sodium hydroxide, it will be around 20 times slower and will require a lot more heat. The reaction has built up considerable heat from the sulfuric acid. I'm going to stir it very fast for a bit so both layers are thoroughly blended. An hour later, the solution has become one layer. It utterly reeks of acetic acid, which tells me the hydrolysis was a success. To separate the butanol from the water and mineral acids, I'm going to add 250 grams of sodium carbonate, and hydrous of course. It is important to keep stirring so the carbon dioxide leaves the solution faster and doesn't build up. Eventually, two layers form. The top layer is mostly terbutanol with a decent amount of water and acetic acid. The bottom layer is mostly water with salts and unneutralized acids. After decanting off the top layer, I have a little over 1 liter of terbutanol solution. I am not sure why it is this colored, but it might be because of impurities in the sodium carbonate. I am going to pour it into my boiling flask and try to separate the terbutanol from the impurities. During the distillation, it is important to boil it softly. Terp butanol azotrope boils around 80 C, excess water boils at 100 C, and acetic acid boils at 120 C. A lot of terp butanol and some of the water will go over, but so will a bit of acetic acid. That can be easily neutralized later on though. After the distilling, the solution has become crystal clear. I am going to add a mix of 40 grams of magnesium sulfate and 60 grams of sodium carbonate. It is important to add this while stirring to neutralize all the acetic acid and absorb a lot of the water in the terbutanol azotrope. Dropping it still will cause the magnesium sulfate and sodium carbonate to get trapped in their own solution, leaving the organic layer relatively untouched. Six hours later, two layers form. The bottom layers are desiccants that have gone so saturated they created their own layer of water. The top layer is a terbutanol azotrope. I could do this a few more times, but I might risk losing a lot of terbutanol. So instead, I'm going to add my solution to 3A molecular sieves. They have pore sizes so small they can only capture water and not the bulk of terbutanol. 12 hours later, my solution has gone a little cloudy, probably from the clay dust on the sieves. When I check the density, it is still in the 78 range. Some places like Science Madness and Fisher Scientific say terbutanol's density is 0.78 grams per milliliter, but other places like Sigma Aldrich and Wikipedia have it at 0.77. Either way, I'm going to add another 100 milliliters just to make sure there is no more water. 12 more hours later, the butanol has gotten even cloudier. I'm going to boil it once more to separate it from the dust. The heat will also speed up the molecules and capture any water that still remains. Making sure all the sieves get in there. The wet ones can be a little tricky. The terbutanol is coming over very fast. 
It is also crystal clear, so that's a very good sign. Eventually, all the terpenol is distilled. My receiving flask is almost filled to the brim. In the boiling flask, a lot of my sieves are still caramel colored, which means they are full of water. In all, I got a little over 550 milliliters of terpenol. The ideal yield is 700 milliliters, so I estimate my yield to be around 80%. A lot of it was probably lost during the salting out and the decantations. But to prove I have terpenol, not the water or the ester, I am going to take a sample and place it in an ice bath. Unfortunately, since my garage is at a crisp 93 degrees, my sample won't spontaneously crystallize without a little help. 20 minutes later, the entire sample is crystallized. However, these crystals are pretty fragile and easily melt in the heat. As a final test, I'm going to see if this ice really can burn as hot as fire. Whoa, those flames got big fast. Alright, this is actually getting a little out of control. I'm going to try to smother it. There's even a little bit of ice left too. Terbunol is one of the strangest alcohols there is. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss another episode.